emulate or oh, emulate emulate incarnate <laughs> Hey up everybody, welcome to Vape Ape, you're here with me Mr B and I'm here to present to you a product that I've purchased for this review and that product is the Asmodus Barrage <laughs> designed by Thesis himself now this is a controversial one a big, a, just stop for a second can we just get an applause on the fact that I did that intro without fucking up once Good on. So there you go. So this is a controversial one. Apart from it being rainbow, it's the only colour I could get it in. I'd prefer either gunmetal or stainless steel, but it's rainbow. It is what it is. So why is this controversial? Well, when it came out, uh, obviously the review that I follow and people say emulate or emulate, emulate, incarnate. Um, is Jay Hayes, and obviously he has the drip called the 502, and which has airflow through the intake, the um, heatsink. But what he said was, is that although it copies the heatsink airflow, that's where the similarities stop. But people then said, oh no, you're just, you're just jealous because she, cause she looks him. No, the, all he said was, is that it just, the similar part is that the airflow comes through the intake end of and when you do look at it you think it's a 502 so there is similarities but that's where the similarities stop now what i'm going to do is we're going to go down below in a second and we're going to have a look at the insides we're going to have a look at the airflow works and then i'm going to bring it back on top and we're going to go through what i think of it how it works and my issues because i do have issues i've been testing this for about two weeks now and I do have issues. So without any further ado and all the bullshit to one side, let's get down below to the jungle floor. Right, here we are with the Asmodus Barrage made by Thesis. Oh, Thesis himself. I'm going to get cocked up because the camera's in a completely... Because, never mind. You, you understand I have issues with cameras. I'm trying to work them out. So here's the box. You get a nice little triangle box. You do have a little bit of a scratch and sniff on the side there we're going to see what that smells like yeah that is deep fried nappies with fossilized asparagus yep yeah, that smells lovely on the back you've got let's see if we can get to focus there we go see a little freeze frame there so you can see what's on the back there you go uh, nothing much else really thesis himself all over it Osmodus. There you go. So that's the packaging. Unusual to come as a triangle package. You don't normally get that. So there's your little manual. You want to read it? Hang on. See if we can. There you go. Freeze frame that. Boom. You get this little doodah here, which is some O rings, some bits and bobs that you can see. You do get a. a coil in there but don't ever use coils that come with them that's just silly underneath you get i believe this is the oh yeah there you go there's the coil it comes with yeah bin that instantly never ever 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 use a coil that somebody comes with because a you don't know what metal it is and even when they say what it is it doesn't mean it is what it is you just take it with a pinch of salt so what i'm going to do now is put this on top of a mod what mod should we use today? I think we're going to use the amazing and absolutely outstanding Vapor SO Lux 2 Gorilla Mod. So what we're going to use for this today. I'm going to stand this on there. There we go. So right, so there's actually quite a few things on this that is unique and a bit weird. Which I'm going to go over with you now. But before we go over the deck. I want to go over this. Now let me just get something I can do all my pointy shit with. Because as usual, I'm not prepared. Right, so. As you can see, let's just focus this in. We're going to focus. There we go. Right, so you can see the bell cap. And you can see how the airflow 
you've got two little holes for the airflow yeah that comes in which comes in through the heat sink at the top now it's 810 drip tip obviously now you'll also notice also what i want to point out is these little catches uh hang on let's see where there there's one of them and across there they're obviously to seat it onto the deck so it doesn't so it stays in position obviously but you can lock in the airflow now one thing i want to make note of and why that is important bring in the deck now then you let's just focus that in yeah there we go now then you can see your your jig line which is there so I want you to bear in mind, that's where your coil's going to go. But then you're going to see some ramps, which are across here. Now, that is where your airflow is going to come in, because obviously it's seated here and here. So, your first thoughts, and I've seen a few videos on this. Your first thoughts is that you need to build your coil this way, because that's where the, the airflow is going to come in. Or at least build it that way, so that the... When the coil's seated, the airflow hits the side. No, that doesn't work. You have to build it because of the way this deck's designed. And this deck is designed like no other. So I know, I know it's just a single coil two post. You're thinking, well, how's that designed like no other? Well, bear with me. So your coil's going to be this way, okay? So it's going to be flat on. Let me just focus that in. So it's going to be flat on like that. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, there. So, the airflow, what's going to happen is it's going to come down through the bell cap. It's going to, let me just see if I can illustrate this a bit better. So, it's going to come down through the bell cap, like so. It's going to hit these ramps, these little air ramps here. It's going to come down the air ramps and come across the coil and then back up. So, the idea is, this is an airflow that's done completely differently. What it's sort of doing is... The two airflows are sort of going across the coils as opposed to hitting it. It makes for interesting vaping. And I've not seen it done before like that. It's a completely different way of doing airflow. However, it does cause problems, which I'll get into later on. But for now, what I'm going to do, now that I've shown you that, there's nothing really much else to look at. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to coil this up. We're going to go for... Uh, I don't want to put too big a coil, but we're going to go for a 2.8 millimeter diameter. We'll slap some cotton into this. We'll get it wicked up, get it right. I will take notice on the wicking because it is very important where the, the actual cotton goes. But I'll slow it back down and get to that when we get to there, just so you can see it. But for now, let's rock and roll. Okay, I've changed my mind slightly on what we're going to use. What I'm going to use is the last one I've got of these, and these are amazing. These are the Mia Vapes. So, Dia Maria. So, Mia Vapes. Okay, let me zoom us in. Oh, there we go. Has he got it? Has he got it? Look at that. Juggernaut. I absolutely love this coil. And for single coil jammies, this is brilliant. So, this is what we're going to be sticking in. You can get these. All you have to do is this, there's a, there might be a group on Facebook called UK Vape Community. There might not be. But if there was, there might be someone in there called Kyle Mia. It might not be. But, you know, if you did, you might just find him in there. So there you go. That's how you get these coils. Hoorah. All right, so here we come to the wicking. As you can see, I've cut them to the length, cut this to the length of the 
um, base or the deck itself. It's going to thin it out a little bit. Not mega, just a tiny, tiny bit. It's getting any loose shite out. Trimmy, trim, trim. Oh, trimmy, trim, trim. Right, with our tweezers, what we're going to do now, you see these little ramps here. It is imperative that you keep them as clear as humanly possible because the airflow is going to come down, it's going to come across the coil and back up. So if you block that off in any way, shape, or form, it's not going to be able to perform how it's supposed to. So I'm just going to drop that in there, almost like a sort of like twisted angle. And grab it, twist it, just get it into that corner as much as humanly. You see, I've jammed it right into that corner. Same on the other side. Grab, twist, place. Right into that corner. As far into that corner as you can get it. So as you can see now, just get a bit of a close-up. Just trash that. Try it again. Focus your little shit. There we go. Right, so you can see, I've jammed them right into the corner just to keep that ramp free. So now the airflow is going to come down, it's going to come around the coil and back up. And it's not going to be impeded by the cotton. Most important. There we go. The Asmodus... Oh, it would help if I focus. The Asmodus Barrage. You're still not going to focus, are you? You're still not going to focus, are you? There you go. Ah! Screw it. There you go. The Asmodus... <laughs> <laughs> do it that way. The Asmodus Barrage by Thesis himself. We're going to get this back on top and we're going to give it a blast, see what it's like, and we'll take it from there. So, without any further ado, all the bullshit to one side, let's rock and roll. Back up top. And we're back. Okay, so there we are with the barrage. You can see it's been made, wicked up, ready to rock and roll. Um, I'm going to run this at. Uh, two, three. I'll run this at 60 watts, I think. 60 watts at 0.3. Can you, will it say on it? Because it won't focus, I can't touch it to focus. But it's 0.39 ohms and at 60 watts. So, yeah, so here we go. <laughs> Warning. Make sure your coils are properly juiced before hitting them. <laughs> oh. False start. Right. Mm, I I feel like I've just vaped a fucking t-shirt. Right. Okay. Let's try that again, shall we? Fucking hell. Oh, there's that cooling. I don't know if you could see it from down below, but this is the stuff I'm using. Um, it's called... Frenzy slushy or hang on no pop frenzy so pop frenzy slushy strawberry lemonade <laughs> so the airflow because I've put the cotton to the sides this confused the shit out of me to begin with because when whenever I've used RDAs the airflow has always been slam onto the side of the coils and then up this confused me because with the way the airflow is it sort of makes you want to build the coil cockeyed. And then I, I had to watch this video. I'm, I'm not going to lie, just how, because I couldn't work out if it wanted me to build it cockeyed or if it wanted me to build it straight. I tried both. I don't know which I preferred, but I wanted to know what Thesis himself, no pun intended, um, thought how or showed how it should be built. And obviously he built it straight on. Once I saw that video, I started to understand where they was going with this and where the similarities stop with the 502. And that is the airflow system. Now, you see, the airflow comes through the sides, goes down, goes around the coil, and back up. 
at, a, at an angle. It, it sort of, it's not a straight shot. It sort of comes in as an angle and sort of skips around it and then comes up, which is I've not seen before. And believe me, if your cotton is not in the right place, if it's not jammed into the sides, it's going to fuck up your airflow big time. Big time. And you're going to get dry hits. You, it's not going. It's going to feel much more restrictive than it should be. The flavor is going to be off. So you really have to know how to wick this and wick it properly. My biggest issue with this, however, the thing that has caused more problems for me than any other RDA I have ever used. The Dead Rabbit 2 came close on it, but this one was real. This one really, really pissed me off. The purge, the, the heat sink. I purge. Always have done. A lot of people purge. Sometimes I micro purge. Sometimes I do a mini pre fire before I get, especially when I'm using something like a juggernaut. I always pre fire before I get my mouth to the coil. As soon as your mouth touches, that creates a negative pressure, which forces air rather than in, it forces the air out. My lip has been burnt. I've had funky monkeys all over my lip, you know, like burn marks and blisters because the heat that comes off this thing is unreal. You literally just getting subjected to boiling hot steam just shot straight at your lip and it hurts. I think that even happened on a live where I did it and it just burnt my lip completely. And I take you you shoot back and you think, fuck, and it makes you not want to use it. Straight up, it makes you mean when it's cool, it's fine. It, and when your mod hasn't just dropped down to five watts, it's fine. Or well, it's not fine. I'm just gonna chuck this back up to 60 where it should be. 66, I'll do. It's fine. When it's ramping up, but as soon as it's ramped up, you go to, you see that coming out there. That you see how there's it doesn't sort of go anywhere. It just hangs around your face, just like that. You can see it, and what happens is, is if you get a, a backflow or a purge, that's going to shoot straight into your face, and it burns the shit out your lips. And I am telling you now, and all and all, repeat to myself a little bit here. But you have not experienced pain until you get super boiling hot steam from vape liquid smashing to your lips. That is its biggest downfall. For me, I think the airflow needs to be further down the barrel. I really do. Maybe, I mean, I can't tell. I think it's under all three heat sinks. It sort of blocks it a little bit. So it's hard to tell. But the the heat sink isn't right on this. The airflow isn't right. The airflow itself, the system is fine, but where they place the intake isn't. And for me, that's its biggest problem. But for me, that is a big, big problem. I can't underestimate, or you can't underestimate, I can't. One of us can't underestimate just how much of a big problem that is. And it does affect the scoring. Huge. It's build quality is spot on. It's got a nice weight to it. Um, the poor screws are Allen key ones, spot on. They're not flathead, so a big plus point there. Um, you can't, like I said, you can't fault its ease of use. It's very easy to build on. So it's good for beginners. Being a single coil, it chucks out amazing flavor. The flavor is spot on. The flavour and vape production, spot on. It gets a lot of things right. But it gets one major thing wrong. Major thing wrong. And for me, when I come to scoring this, I have to think long and hard. Because I, I am literally torn on this. I love it for what it can do, but I hate it for what it does. And love and hate, they are two very strong emotions. So because of that, I'm going to split it straight down the middle. I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. Average. Could have been spectacular. But because of that major flaw, it just isn't. It just it's, They haven't quite fought it through. They thought, oh, we'll put some airflow in the heatsink. It looks cool. But they, didn't, they haven't directed the, the heatsink. 
or the airflow. They haven't directed the airflow away from your mouth. And trust me, trust me, when it happens to you, if you buy one of this, you will think, Shh, I wish I'd have listened to Mr. B. But there you go. So that's this video done. That's this review done. We're now going to move on to the next one. The next one, hey, I'll tell you, special, special. I've got to thank a friend of mine, Kyle, Kyle Mia, who owns Mia Vapes, who does the coils that I use. He has sent me this. Oh my God. This is special. Super special. It is the Wismec Indie Duo from about 2016. This is super inventive, super innovative, super, super special. I have looked for one of these for years and never been able to find one. Plenty of places to sell them, but as soon as you go to buy it, oh, out of stock. Always the same. He got his hands on, he sent it me as a present. And I can't thank you enough, Kyle. I can't thank you enough. So that's what the next review is going to be. Stick around for that one. For the Wismec Indie Dual RDA, that's going to be something special. Patreon, I, I'd mentioned Patreon before, it was supposed to start at the 1st of October, but we've had a few issues, maybe Neil didn't help, and obviously some bits going on, so we're going to start that 1st of November, live, live, ooh, live, we are live tonight at 6pm, but we're going live on Twitch, the uh, the link for that is going to be in the description below, the reason being is I'm an affiliate on Twitch, so I might as well use the account, why not? So, there we go. So, until tonight when you see me live, that's all from me, Mr. B. Ta-ta. For now.